In today's tutorial, we're going to be creating this particular text animation, which you can use as your intro or other logo animations if you please. We're going to be doing this predominantly using geometry nodes. So with that, let's begin the tutorial. So we're going to bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window and change this from the 3D viewport to the geometry node editor. Then we'll press this plus button to create a new geometry node tree, zoom in, select the group input and press X to delete it. Now we'll press shift A and search for a text or a string node and then plug this string into the group output. However, we can't make that connection because a string has no actual geometry. So we have to convert the string to a curve by searching for a strings to curves node. Now, of course, you could have directly used the strings to curves node and instead of plugging the string into this string you could have typed in whatever you wanted over here but I always prefer using an external string so that I can make changes to a single node rather than searching for where this particular option is now let's type in whatever we want and then change the font by pressing this button and choosing the font that you want then we'll change the alignment from left to center and top baseline to middle as well so that it comes perfectly to the center beyond that you can always play around with the character spacing and word spacing if you please but I'll leave those at the default for now the next thing that's going to be done is the actual animation or at least the setup for the animation. So we'll press shift A and search for a rotate instances node and plug that in right after the strings to curves and for the actual rotation we'll search for a random value node. Now this random value is initially going to give a float. We have to change that from float to vector because we want it to be random on all three of the axes. Then we can plug this into the rotation and you can see how this rotation works. However right now it's pivoting about the local space of every individual instance. We don't want that. We want all of them to rotate about a set central point and for that we can simply switch the local space off by toggling this button and now if you change the max value on all three of the axes you can see the type of rotation that occurs for each of the letters separately so that's what we're going to be animating to create the final animation however for now we'll just keep it at zero so that we can do the rest of the setup now if you switch off your overlays you won't be able to see anything because this is currently a curve and not a mesh so to actually see it we have to convert it to a mesh by searching for a fill curves node plugging that after the rotate instances and now it becomes an actual mesh. However, this is a 2D mesh and we want it to be in three dimensions by giving it some thickness. To give it some thickness, we can search for an extrude mesh node, plug that in after the fill curves and you see it gets extruded way too much. So we can make a few changes. The first thing is changing the offset down to 0.1. And the next thing is if you actually look at the bottom, you see all these tiny faces also created, which just takes more computation. So to remove that, we're going to switch off individual. Now the problem is that this bottom face is no longer there and it it's just like it's see-through. So to fix that and give it a bottom face, we can search for a join geometry, plug that in just before the group output, and then take this fill curve node and plug it into the join geometry. So now we have the bottom as well. However, if you've watched my previous text tutorials using geometry nodes, you would know that the normal is currently flipped. So we have to flip that by searching for a flip faces node. This should just help with the shading if there's any shading errors, but you don't necessarily need this node for the animation that I was planning on today because we're going to be keeping the text is fairly simple. Next up, we have to assign the materials and we want one material for the front and the back face and we want a separate material for these sides. So to do that, we can just move the group output a bit to the side, search for a set material node, plug that in right here and then press shift D to duplicate it and plug that in here. Now we need two separate materials. So we'll go to the material properties tab over here, change this name to maybe faces and then we'll press this plus button to add in a new slot, press this new button to create a new material and name this one as sides. Now on the first set material, Material, we'll go ahead and choose faces and for the second set material we'll go ahead and choose sides however for the selection of the second material we'll go to this extrude mesh node take the side and plug that in to the selection so now if you actually switch to your rendered view and just choose faces and give it an arbitrary color for now to make the differentiation you can see how we have the front and the back using this particular faces material and the sides are using the sides material so that looks all right and we can move on to refining this mesh because if you zoom in and you actually look at it you can see all of these individual individual lines. To make that even finer, you can do two things. The first thing is searching for a subdivide curve node and plugging that in after the strings to curves node over here. And if you increase the cuts, you can see how it becomes nice and smooth. However, if you zoom in even now, you can see the individual faces. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that with the compression on YouTube, but the individual faces are visible. So to remove that, you can again move the group output a bit more to the side, search for a set shade smooth node and plug that in after the set material. Now this set shade smooth node is going to cause some errors to a few of the letters and it's going to make it look puffed up and in order to fix that particular issue normally you'd click on shade auto smooth but you can't do that in geometry nodes as far as i'm aware so what we're going to do is make sure that only the sides are set to shade smooth
smooth. So we'll take the same side selection and plug that into the selection of the set shade smooth. And that should fix all of the shading issues that you might have faced. Now with that, we can set all of our animation and render defaults, after which we'll do our actual animation, then the texturing, then the backgrounds. So let's go to our render properties, switch on ambient occlusion, bloom, and screen space reflections. Then let's go to our output properties, change the frame rate to 30 frames per second, end frame I'm going to keep at 150 so that it's a five second long animation. Output folder, I'm going to make it whatever I wish to be. File format is going to be FFmpeg video and the encoding I'm going to change from Matroska to MPEG4 and an output quality of Perceptory Lossless. Then I'm going to change my viewport shading to rendered, although it already is rendered for now. And I'm going to go to the, my world background and just change this all the way to a very dark color. Almost black is fine. Now for the materials, I want the actual faces to be metallic and I want the sides to be this rough blue color. So I'll switch my geometry node editor to the shader editor. And then since sides is already selected, I'm going to go to the nodes, increase the roughness all the way to one and change the base color to this sort of a nice color. Then I'm going to go to my material properties over here, go down to the settings and just switch off shadows because I don't really want that on any of my materials. Then I'll go up, choose faces and for the faces, I don't want it to have any base color. So I'm just going to reduce the saturation back to zero. Then I'm going to increase the metallicness all the way to one and I'm going to reduce the roughness down to 0 0.4. Now we have a metallic face and a rough side. Now we'll do the animation. So we'll switch back to the geometry node editor, increase our timeline by a little bit. And for the animation, we're going to use this random value node that we created over here. So on frame one, we'll increase the max value to something. Maybe let's go with 10 and just tap I while hovering over it. Then we'll go to frame 150, change the max value down to zero and then tap I. And now if you play the animation, you should be able to see how they rotate around and finally end up in their final positions after everything. Now, if you don't like the way they're moving, you can always play around with the seed value to get something unique, but I'll leave it at zero for now. There may be situations where there's intersections like right now. If you're fine with that, good. If you're not, play around with the seed value till you get a variation that has no or minimal overlap between the different letters such that you get an animation that you think looks perfect. So now that we have this particular animation set, we might want to increase or change the crispiness of the animation, which means we don't want it to start off slow and then also end slow as well, but maybe want it to start off fast and then have it slow down towards the end. To change all of that, we're going to switch from our timeline to the graph editor. And the way I'm going to do this is by selecting all of the keyframes on the left hand side, which are these keyframes over here, and then tapping V to set the keyframe handle type and then changing that to vector. That way it becomes a straight line when it starts and it slowly smooths out towards the end. And I think that looks a bit better for this particular animation. However, if you want to make sure that it goes even smoother towards the end and it speeds up even more at the start, you can actually select these handles over here on the right hand edge and then scale them up. By scaling them up, it'll be a much slower and smoother animation at the end and a much faster start at the beginning. So how you want to mess around with this is up to you, whether you want it to be really fast at the start and then have it slow down towards the end. You can see how slow it becomes right at this situation, or you can have it much smaller over here and play around till you get what you want. Beyond that, you can also take these keyframes and just press G minus 10 so that you have 10 frames at least at the end where the final position just rests. So with that, I think I'll go ahead with this particular animation, but I think there's way too much of motion at the beginning. So I'll just select these and press G Y and move it down by maybe minus five units. And that should just make it a little slower as well at the beginning and have less motion. So now that I'm happy with this particular animation, I can move on to creating all of the backgrounds, which will actually elevate this from a simple animation to something a little more professional. For that, the first thing that I want to do is add in a bunch of particles or spheres that move around, which will look really good once we add in some depth of field. So in the geometry node tree, I'll go ahead and press shift A and search for a join geometry node so that we can join in the particles along with our main tree. Now for the particles, I'll just search for a cube, plug the cube into the join geometry and then scale it up so that it covers the entire word. And I don't want it to be this much on the Y. So I'll reduce it on the Y axis only to three units so that it reduces to a slightly more rectangular shape. Then I'll convert it into a volume by searching for a mesh to volume node. And within this volume, I want to go ahead and distribute some points. So I search for a distribute points in volume node. And now you can play around with the density to get what density you like. I'll go with a value of 0 0.5. And then I don't want them to just remain points. I want them to actually have spheres on them. So I have to search for an instance on points node, plug that in after the distribute points in volume. And for the actual instance, I'm going to search for an icosphere. Now this icosphere, I'm going to go ahead and reduce the subdivisions or increase the subdivisions to something like five or three in case five makes your laptop a little laggy. And I'm going to reduce the radius down to 0 0.01 or three 
three. And then for the scale, I'll search for another random value node. And I'm going to keep it on float so that all three of the values get the same number and they remain round. So just plug that in. And for the max, I'm going to actually increase it to two. For the min, I'll just make it 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 so that the smallest ones are a little bit bigger. Next, I'm going to search for a set position node so that I can actually animate the motion of these spheres. And for that animation, I'm going to play around with the offset. So I'll search for a noise texture, plug the color value into the offset. However, remember that noise texture always shifts everything up by an average of 0 0.5. So I have to search for a vector math node, switch it from add to subtract and subtract out 0 0.5 on all of the axes. Then to actually animate these points, I'm going to change from 3D to 4D. I'm going to go back to frame 0 and then just hover over the W value and tap I. Then I'll go to frame 150, hover over the W value and click type something maybe 0 0.2 and then tap I. Then I'll come down here, press A, T, linear so that it's a nice linear motion and it doesn't slow down and speed up. If you feel like you want more motion, increase the W value. And if you feel like the motion is fine, but you need it to actually move even more, you can always search for another vector map node, switch it from add to multiply or scale and just scale it up by a little bit and it'll move a little bit more. Now, when you're actually playing back the animation, the frame rate will be slow. So if you want a realistic idea, change this back from the graph editor to the timeline and then switch the playback from play every frame to frame dropping. Then if you play the animation, you'll get a realistic idea of how fast the particles are moving and your letters are moving and all of that. So once you're happy with all of that, we want these particles to also be set to shade smooth and we want to give some material to them. So I'll search for a set material node as well as a set shade smooth node. Plug both of those in just before the joint geometry. And for the material, we need to add in a new material. So we'll press this plus button to create a new slot. Press this new button to add in a new material and we'll change this as dots. And we'll come to this set material and choose dots. Now to play around with the actual dots material, you're gonna have to switch back to the shader editor. And for most of them, I just want them to be extremely rough with a very slight bluish color. However, for the rest of them, I want them to be emissive. So I'll search for an object info node and I'm gonna search for a color ramp node so that we can have better control. And for the color ramp, I'm gonna switch it from linear to constant. And then I'm gonna plug the random value into the factor. And I'm gonna bring this white in a bit and plug this color into the emission strength. Now to have better control over the emission strength, I'm gonna search search for a math node and I'm going to switch this from add to multiply. Now I'm going to multiply the value by something like five and I'm going to go ahead and actually change the emission color to that bluish color that I wanted. Now I'm going to switch off overlays and if too many of them are lit, you can always drag this slider towards the right. If too few are lit, you can drag it towards the left. However, I think I'm going to increase the emission strength even more by changing the value up to 10, but I'm going to reduce the number that are lit. I'm also going to change the saturation to desaturated a bit and the original base color, I'm just going to desaturate that as well or maybe keep it at white by changing the saturation all the way to zero. Next we want some sort of background so I'll press shift a search for a plane press s to scale it up type in a large number maybe something like 20 so that it is fairly large and then press g z to just move it down till it's fairly far away and it doesn't disrupt any of the particles and it should also not disrupt the animation. So for example, the end is fairly far behind. If your background plane was too close, the end would start getting clipped off like this. So you have to make sure that it is further than the furthest point that your animation will actually go till and that should be fair enough as a distance. Now remember, I did not want any of these shadows, but I only switched off shadows for bases. So I'll have to go to sides, go all the way down, change the shadow mode to none. Dots shadow mode is also going to be none and even for faces shadow mode can be none. Next let's play around with the lighting so that the actual metallicness can be seen because during this motion you see there are reflections from the other letters so the metallicness shows in the animation and somebody can tell that it's metallic. However towards the end it's very flat so it's harder to tell the metallic nature and that you can get by either adding in HDRIs or playing around with the lights. So for now we'll use the default lights itself and add in many more but to get a good feel of the light you first have to set up your camera so we'll just press 7 to go into the top view and then press ctrl alt numpad 0 to snap the camera to view we'll select the camera go to the camera properties change the focal length down to maybe 18 and then go to this object properties over here, change the location on the X and the Y to zero and the Z value, just change it until you're fairly zoomed in. So I think something like that is all right, but I want a lot of the motion to also be seen. So I'm just going to bring it back a little bit more. And now all of the motion is within the camera region, which is fine. Next, let's select our original light, change the power 
become 1000 down to something like 500. Give it a slightly bluish tint and then press GZ and move it up. Then I'll press Shift D X and move another version towards the side. And I'm also going to select the original light and press GX and move that towards the side as well. So now we have two on the left and the right. Next, I'll press Shift A and search for an area lamp. Press GZ to move it back a bit. And to actually see the area lamp, I'm just going to switch on overlays. Now I'm going to scale it on the X axis to make it nice and rectangular. And then I'm going to rotate it about the Z axis and then press GZ to just move it up by a little bit. Then I'll press Shift D X and Shift D X again. And for each of these, I'm also going to give them a very slight bluish hue. And if I wanted to control all of them using a single color, which I actually do want, I should have used Alt D instead of Shift D. And that way, just by changing the color for one of them, the color would have changed for all of them. So now right at the start, if you feel like it's a bit too dark, you can always add in even more lights towards the front. And if you want the background to also have some sort of lighting, you can add in lights and shift them towards the background plane. And by playing around with that, you'll get a lot of different effects. However, the last two things that I want to do just before rendering the animation is selecting my camera again and adding in depth of field by going to the camera properties over here and just checking depth of field. I'm going to expand the options and then click on focus on object and just choose the cube object, which is our geometry node object. And with that, I'll just change the f-stop down to maybe 0.1 and that should create this nice depth of field. So when the letters are very close to the camera, they'll be all blurred out. And even when they're further away, they'll be all blurred out. But then eventually once they settle in, they all come into focus while these dots still remain out of focus. Along with that, I just want to switch on motion blur. I'll go to the render properties and just check motion blur. To test if everything's right, go to a frame where there's actually quite a bit of motion. So maybe some frame like this and then click render and just render out the image. Check the motion blur. And if you feel like you want some more motion blur, increase the shutter. If you want to reduce it, reduce the shutter and play around with the settings until you get something that you're happy with. Once you're done with all of that, you can always go to the color management and play around with the view transform by switching it to standard. Or you can also play around with the look and give it some more contrast by increasing the contrast levels and seeing which one suits your animation the best. Volumetrics is also something that you could add, but I'm not going to be adding that for this particular animation because I think the bloom and the background plate having a little bit of lighting from the two sides looks good enough as well. And with that, you can always go ahead and click render animation. If at all you create one animation for a single client and you want to change the animation for another client, because you've set this up using geometry nodes, it becomes really, really useful as you can just go back to the geometry nodes, go to the string and change this to whatever you want. So let's say I want to call this trailer. Just by changing it to trailer, now you have the exact same animation. Everything's the same, but the word's completely different. And now you can get totally different animation. If you want to change around the hue, you can actually go to the compositor and check this use nodes button, bring it to the side and search for a hue hue saturation value node or plug it in over here and play around with the hue. Now, of course, to see this, you have to check backdrop so that the image comes to the back. But for the image to appear, you actually have to render out a frame and search for a viewer node and just plug this into the viewer as well so that you can see it. Now to zoom out on the backdrop, you can tap the letter V and it'll zoom out. Alt V will zoom in. So now change the hue to whatever you want. If you want it to be red or pink, just play around till you get the color that you want. So that way you can actually go ahead and give different animations to different clients by just setting this up once. So with that, once you're happy with everything, you can go ahead and press render animation. Hopefully you learned something from this video and gained knowledge from the tips and tricks that were there at the end so that you can create variations for different clients with just a single setup. This can obviously be combined with other videos on my channel to enhance the effect make them more cool and keep them super unique. I release videos every single day. So there's definitely content present on my channel that's just waiting for you to explore. So until the next video comes out tomorrow, thank you so much for watching. Keep creating and stay creative.